Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Now, what we have here is a lot of uh, deep pour epoxy resin uh, and a beautiful goldfield burl. Now, I've had this for quite a long time and I've always intended to do a resin project with it, but never really had time or got round to it. Uh, but a few weeks ago, a company called Let's Resin got in touch with me and asked if I wanted to work with them to produce more resin pieces. They'd seen some of my earlier work and they wanted to work with me, so we're going to see how it turns out. Now, they sent me some resin to get started with so we can do a few test pieces to see how it works. Uh, we're going to use this beautiful Goldfield Burl to start off with, so let's get started. We'll get set up and see how it goes. Okay, we're about ready to get started. I'm going to hot glue the burl to this Perspex board. Uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be Perspex, it can be anything as long as it's waterproof. So just put some hot glue on there. The main reason for gluing it down is it's going to hot, stop it floating when we put the resin in. Let's give that a chance to set. Okay, next part is to glue on this plastic I've salvaged around a piece like that. I decided to glue it to the board first because there's lots of bits of wood missing here. And I think it's gonna be an awful lot easier to do it this way than the alternative. So I'll just quickly turn this round. How much overlap do you have? That's going to be starting around there. few bits on to get it started. What we're effectively trying to do is create a like a bath to pour the resin into. So it needs to be as waterproof or as watertight as we can get it. I'm not brilliant with a hot glue gun. It's not one of my natural tools so I'm sure you, you'll have a better job Oh, you'll, I'm sure you'll do a better job than I do. Now on this side of the piece, there's very little to stick it to until we get around here. So I'm not gonna worry too much about those areas. I'm gonna start applying the glue again around there. Okay. And this is the bit we've gotta be very careful about. So a good solid bead from the bottom to the top. Perhaps I'll put a second on there as well. Okay, I'll glue this closed just to make sure we're as airtight or watertight as we can be. Should do that. I'm just going to give this a couple of seconds to set and then I'm going to seal all the way around the edge. And that hopefully should do it. Right, I'm just going to give it a few seconds to set and I'll give it a visual inspection. Okay, that's had enough time to dry. Now, one method for trying to gauge how much resin you're gonna need is by pouring in rice into this and then tipping the rice out and putting that into a, a measuring vessel and that'll tell you roughly how much resin you're gonna need. Now, because this piece has so many little uh, nooks and crannies, I'm not going to use that method this time because uh, I don't think I'd get all the rice back out and I don't want little bits of rice annoying me for the rest of my life in the side walls of this, uh, of this whatever I'm going to end up making. So I'm going to leave this to one side and start making up the resin. Okay, so this is the, the resin we've been sent. Just open it up and take out the contents. We've got a set of instructions 
uh, some nice gloves and uh, a spatula of some sort. I'm not quite sure what that's for yet. I'm sure we'll figure it out. We've also got the main event, which is the two-part epoxy uh, A and B. And this is measured by uh, weight, so it's a direct two-to-one ratio. So I think, first of all, I'll just get set up with some scales. Right, I think we're going to make up these two cups in volume to start off with. But I think I'll measure it over three because I don't want to fill these right to the top. So I'm going to put a, a measure of part A in all three and then we'll top it up with the part B to the correct amount and then mix. Now I've just been reading uh, the information on the resin and it has a shelf life of about a year, which is pretty good. And also ideal storing conditions is that you want to store it at around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So I haven't had this kept in my uh, workshop, because as you know, it's quite cold in here. I've kept this in the house uh, until I was ready to use it. So that's on, we're working in grams. Gloves on. Start off by pouring in 300 grams in each one. It's actually nice and easy to pour. It's not too thick like some resins. Good. And then we'll add the volume up to 450 and that'll be two to one. I have learned my lesson here, by the way. I'm not using my wife's scales, I'm using my own. Okay, there's our three lots of resin to start mixing. Now you can use spatula, actually I'm fairly sure that's what this is for, is to use for mixing. Now I have fixed up a rudimentary uh, coat hanger on the end of a drill, which will work pretty well. <laughs> Don't go too fast. I'm going to do it by hand. <laughs> what an idiot. I'm not sure, did I mention the importance of wearing gloves? Now this does need a fair amount of stirring, so don't be tempted to start rushing this process. Okay, so they're all mixed. Now the colour-wise, it's predominantly going to be black, but I'm going to be adding a small amount of copper as well. Now, I don't necessarily want two black and one copper. I want the copper to be a much smaller amount. So I'm just gonna decant some of it into a smaller cup. That should be fine. All right, I shall add black to these. I've changed the gloves, by the way. The other ones are getting a bit sticky from the, uh, well, for obvious reasons. This is just a mica powder I bought online. One thing the instructions did say is that you're not to use any water-based colorants with this resin. Okay, now I'll put a bit of copper in the little one. Now, I'm not sure how much of this you're gonna see. This is more of a a test than anything else. I think it's worthwhile doing. That is beautiful. Okay, I'm going to tidy up a little bit here. 
We'll sit these to one side for three to four minutes to let the air bubbles come to the surface and pop, and then we'll start pouring. Okay. It's had long enough to sit. So I shall start off with the smaller one in the bottom. There's quite a few air cavities in there, so it will settle. This is also the point where we find out if my uh, sealing up of this unit worked. So we'll put a little bit of copper in here. We'll add another one. More copper. No leaks yet. That's good. I don't think I judged that too bad for a quantity. And the rest of the copper will swirl this in. Right, now I'm going to leave this in the workshop for a few hours just to make sure that everything is watertight and it's not going to go anywhere. And then after that, I shall move it into the house to let it cure in a slightly warmer temperature. It'll still cure in here but it'll probably take an extra couple of days, maybe 36 hours more in here than it would do in the house. So I'll take it in there. Right, all we can do now is wait. Okay, not everything went to plan. About four hours after pouring, uh, the mold started to leak. Unfortunately, I was inside at the time and I didn't notice for about half an hour when I came out, it made quite a mess. I managed to salvage what I can. I ran around and tried to find something I could sit it in, and I ended up with this old pan I had. Uh, <laughs> it worked, kind of. It still leaked a bit. We've lost a bit of the resin inside, but we will make do. Next problem I've got now is how on earth to get it out. Uh, yeah, okay, all right, I'll struggle on with this, and I'll bring you back in a second. Yay! <laughs> oh, jeez. That's that salt bit salt. Probably finish. Okay. Now for this. Do you know what? I'm just going to turn it with the plastic on. I'll cut off this rim. Okay, right, we're nearly at the point where we can get it onto a lathe. Now, I'm gonna initially put it on between centers and turn a small tenon on each end. Now, the very center of the bowl, I've got a small burl just poking its head out there. So I just want to trim that back so I can keep the, uh, the live center in the middle. Right, let's get this between centers. Okay, we're eventually on the lathe. We're all locked off. Obviously tailstock and dry spurt, nice and safe. Uh, I'm gonna be using a glove and my face shield for this first part without any question. There is no way I'm turning this lot off without adequate protection. So I've got an old carbide cutter, which has certainly seen better days. And I'm just gonna very carefully start taking away all this plastic and leave the, uh, the bare wood and resin surface under, underneath and we'll take another look at it. Okay, I 
think, maybe a little bit of plastic there, but I think that's pretty much all of the, uh, the leftover packing we've used. Right, I'm just gonna start creating a tenon on each side that we're gonna use when we need to start mounting it and holding it out. Can't wait to see what's inside. This bit's looking beautiful. <laughs> I really miss turning resin. It's beautiful stuff to turn. When you start getting these ribbons coming off, it's uh, it's quite mesmerizing. But boys, they get everywhere. Right, I've just flattened off the top. And I'm just starting to create the tenon on the bottom, and then I'll create one on the top here as well. Okay, that will do for a tenon on the bottom. I don't need a lot of wood there, it's just purely while well, I'm just making something on this side so I can turn it around and put a proper one on. So it's just very, very temperate at the moment. Uh, I need a lot of this to come away anyway because that's almost pure resin in this area. There's only a little bit of wood there. Right, so I'll make a small one on the top and then I'm going to decide where we're going to cut this in half. Small tenons made top and bottom, not overly deep, but I don't need them to be at the moment. Uh, so now we're going to decide where we want to cut this to separate the lid from the base. And I'm thinking, what can we see underneath? I'm thinking on that line there. So we will cut. Yeah, that gives enough. So we're going to cut through there, so you end up with two separate pieces. I want to cut the majority of the way through with a parting tool, and then I'll hand saw the remaining bit. Uh, two halves of a pot. Right, let's quickly get tidied up a bit. We'll put my chuck on here. I think we'll start working on the on the base. Okay, so we're on the chuck nicely at this end. Now I don't need to do an awful lot in this orientation. All I need to do is to make another tenon that we can turn around again and put into these jaws. The reason why I'm making another tenon is because I want to be able to finish this the base of this bowl properly and put a recess in before we turn it round again and start hollowing it out. Okay, that's all we need. So now turn this round and sort the base. Okay, now the majority of this base is wood, if you remember at the start. So I think it's gonna have a little rosin, resin pockets there and there. So I'm gonna turn this all back until we get it all nice and clean, and then we can put a recess in, sand, and finish, and then turn it around again. Okay, 
that's coming up. Just need to clear that bit of resin there, I think. I might just put a slight curve on here. Or should I leave it flat? Or should I give it a foot? Let's give it a foot. Okay, so the foot's gonna be between these two lines. So I'm gonna bring in this edge, which will clear up these areas that I need it to, and we'll put the recess in there. sand up the base and I should bring you back when that's done. You'll see some sanding later on, don't worry. Okay, we sanded the bottom, turned it round. Now we're just gonna go in with four the bits, uh, slowly widening the hole as wide as I can. Uh, Depth-wise, we're taking it right up to the edge of the Jacob's chuck. smoothly now we're going to open up this hole larger with a carbide uh, I'm probably going to stop around this area here I'm not going to go take the walls too thin because the outside still needs refining so that's going to be coming in somewhat so let's take our time and start widening this up It's all going nicely. Now this little light I've just put in here is something I've made up. It's just a USB extension cable with a, a battery on the end. And this is like a little USB light, a little LED. The cost at about 20 pence each or something like that. And that'll just mag magnetize itself to the back of the tool rest and it kind of lets me see what I'm doing. absolutely fantastically. Before I started hollowing out I put a new negative rake carbide cutter on my old tool and the sides are like glass that's absolutely amazing. Still a couple of uh, tool marks that I'll need to send out I'll just quickly go over again but I cannot imagine anything else producing such a beautiful finish. That's incredible. Right, I'm gonna tidy this up and then I'll start to sand a bit. I'll let you watch a little bit, but then I'll bring you back at the end. I've just quickly cleaned up all the walls inside and I think I can start sanding at literally 180 200 it's uh, it really is that smooth uh, before I do that though what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna put a little step in here for the lid to fit into the corresponding shape to that on the lid as well just to help it to sit nice and snugly right I'll start sanding 
Okay, that literally took no time at all. Right, I want to put a finish on the inside and I shall bring you back when we're starting on the lid. Okay, we've got the lid on the lathe. Uh, I was going to take a couple of passes just to clean this up a little bit and then we'll start making uh, the joint that will fit this to the rest of the piece. all that needs. Now the first thing we've got to create is the corresponding shape on this lip so we can get a nice fit. Now that recess that we made on the bottom I've set that width to these calipers so I can cut in and check get it close before we bring up the piece and do some fine tuning. So we'll just do it quick. All right, okay, all right, we were fine first time. Now, I just need to come a little bit deeper. Actually, no, I think I'll leave that exactly as it is. Right, now, we don't necessarily want a lot of weight in this lid, so I'm just gonna hollow this out a little bit from just inside the edge, just to give us uh, a nice look to it on the inside. I shall put uh, squiggly sand this, put a finish on it, and I shall bring you back when we're putting these two pieces together and we can start working on the outside. Okay, now because the lid is slightly loose fitting, I'm just putting some paper in between the two. Just so we get a nice join. There's no rattling around. So you can bring up the tailstock, lock it in place, and then start turning the outside. Now I just want to make sure that I've got this kind of lined up before I do anything else. That looks about it. Right, I can lock that in place with the tailstock. So that's like a, a friction fitting, as it were. I'll just take off a bit of this tissue paper. We'll be turning it away anyway. Okay, next step now is to shape the side. Now I would like a, a relatively simple shape with this. I think the, the wood and the resin are gonna do all the talking for us because I know I didn't show you putting the finish on inside, which is a really mean trick, but believe me, it's amazing. So gentle curve top to bottom, just very, very slight, and then we'll fade that into the lid as well. When we start working on the lid, I'll be putting tape round here, so I can take the tailstock away. Right, I'm gonna get out the carbide again that we were using a little while ago to start shaping this, and we'll make a start. suddenly just occurred to me 
is, ah, there we go. I'm just wondering if there's areas that we need to expose to make sure we get the most out of the wood we've got on here. And, and that's slipped a bit. Right, I need to shove that lid back around here a bit. But yeah, we need to expose this bit of wood here. So that bit of resin, as you can see over the top of that wood there, needs to go. And there's a bit of wood there as well, which uh, needs to come through. Right, I'm just going to loosen this tailstock a little bit and just try and turn this lid back round. Right, I think I'm just going to take out the ball gouge just to do some fine passing cuts down here. Shall I stick with the carbide? No, I'll, I'll use the ball gouge. Just some very, very fine cuts. more but that's just about got it. That wood is amazing. I didn't really say much about the wood at the start and it said it's a goldfield burl which is part of the, uh, the eucalyptus family from Australia and it really is amazing wood. Absolutely beautiful. Right I think that little bit I'll probably get with sanding but uh, I'm just going to put a slight curve on this lip and then we'll start looking at the top. Okay, I've just taken a look inside. Let's put some more paper on. Uh, there's not enough room in the lid really. There's not enough material there to make a finial out of. So I'm gonna quickly smarten up this side, sand it, put a finish on it. We'll put some tape around the lid and then we'll finish off the lid separately. Okay. Right, I shall sand this a little bit. I shall let you watch this lot. When that's done, we'll tape it and sort the lid. All right, sanding but nicely. Some amazing grain in this Goldfield Burl. I'm absolutely amazed that we still managed to keep some separation between the copper and the black. After all the messing around I had to do to get it re-housed in a new pot. I'm surprised there's any there at all, but it looks absolutely gorgeous. Also, considering I didn't have a pressure pot, that has filled remarkably well. Right, give this a clean over with isopropyl. We'll let that evaporate. Okay, I'm gonna put a, a cellulose sanding sealer over the top of this. We'll buff it in, and then we're gonna cut it back with an abrasive paste. I'm not worrying about the lid yet, obviously. Rub this in. I'm going to use the True Grit abrasive paste. First, we'll apply this one and then we'll go on with the super fine. Clean off the excess again with isopropyl. A 
Okay, now I'm gonna go on with the True Grit Ultra Fine, and this will hopefully get rid of any micro scratches we've got in the resin, although I can't see many. Buff this in in the same way. Okay, just clean off again with isopropyl, removing any excess. Let that evaporate. Okay, now it's time for the finish. We're putting on number 10. From the waxes we made up a few months ago. This is uh, beeswax, caranuba wax, and a bit of orange oil, all in a linseed oil mix. Now I'm going to apply this while the, the piece is spinning. So I'll put plenty on the cloth and then hold it again against it as it spins. When this is done, we're going to be taping off this area here and then working on the lid. Okay, that should do it. Right, I'm going to take this up and we'll sort the lid. Okay, we've taped up, so that lid should be nice and secure on there, but I am going to keep the tailstock in for a little while until the last moment when I'll take it away. I think I am going to make a little finial for this separately. pretty good. Just need to get rid of that little nib in the middle there and then I'm just going to drill a little hole for the finial. Okay, I'll just quickly sand this up and put a finish on it and then next time you'll see it is when we're attaching the finial. Okay, I've got a little piece of U to make the finial out of. It's gonna be a nice simple design. Should only take a couple of seconds to make. I'm going to stick this on and I'm going to take a look at what we've done. Well, there we go. Goldfield Burl in resin. And I'm so pleased with the way this come out. Uh, as I mentioned at the start, I haven't done a resin project for about six months. So I was a little bit nervous, especially with me trying uh, a new product as well, but it really has surpassed all my expectations. Uh, I've always had a lot of problems in the past with the resins I've used to try and keep the separation of colours. But even though I had to uh, take most of the resin out of the cast and put it back in again, it still kept a lot of the separation between the two colours and it looks absolutely amazing. If you're interested in getting some resin, then please do think about Let's Resin. Uh, and if you want a small incentive, uh, Let's Resin have given me a discount code for you to use, which will get you 10% off in their store. All the information is in the description below, but the uh, discount code is just using Mike uh, at the checkout, or Mike Holton, and that gets you 10% off. I do get a small residual commission from that, but as most of you will already know, any money I do make from this channel, I put it straight back in. I use revenue from YouTube and from uh, residual payments like this to keep the channel going, to buy better and better wood, to 
try and make as more interesting things as I can. Sorry, there's a heck of a gale going on outside. We've got a, a storm hitting us at the moment, which is... Uh, so I apologise for the noise. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this one. It's been an absolute amazing project for me. Uh, I've loved every single second. Uh, I really can't get over it. I've had this piece of burl for ages now, and I've been dying to turn it. And I knew what I wanted to do with it, and thank goodness for this company coming along uh, with their proposition and making this one possible. Anyway, if you have enjoyed it, I would really appreciate a like and subscribe and all that usual thing. And if you leave a comment as well, then you're going to be entered into the next giveaway. Uh, again, I'm not quite sure when that's going to be, but if you've left a comment, then you are going to be entered. Apart from that, thank you very much indeed. I shall see you next time. Thank you.